So, hey guys, Chaos are here. So, we finally got some level limit break news. I'm kind of late on the ball, I guess, but there's so much to cover for the anniversary, so I postponed it a bit. But this is something I complained about very recently, that for April we didn't get a level limit break batch, and I was worried that Bandai were going to abandon the mechanic. But it might just be that they are postponing it and that it will be tied for to the Pyro King Adventures, which kind of makes sense. So crossing my fingers that we get more, both for like all rare crews and all free to play, that will be super cool. But yeah, as for the new level limit breaks, uh, all of the free to play Sai Mugis got it. Luffy and Jinbei has it too, so I'm not sure why they're not listed here, like they've added every single legend that has a, a level limit break, including those without a batch, like Barton and Cavity, so no reason for Luffy and Jinbei not to be here, I guess they just forgot about them. Anyway, let's just look at them one by one, and just look at what they do now, usually I compare to what they did before and what they do now, but... As you know, these units were not that impressive before, so better to just look at them as new units in general, really. Sora actually did use a bit. He was pretty good in Trash Map for wave clearing and get a buff for final stage, so he can still do that and much more. Sora now deals a lot of damage in non-type damage to all enemies, ignoring defensive effects. Uh, he also boosts orbs of Psy units for 2.25 times for 3 turns. So that's a big buff from before which was 1.75 times. And also if Luffy is on the team or is at a support, you reduce death up and damage threshold by 5 turns. So by using that you also get some very nice potential utility which does make Sora a lot more usable like if you use him before a final boss stage. You can get some utility and damage, and you also keep the buff for final stage, which is very nice. And he can still do his job in Trash Map just even better than before. Nami got one of the biggest buffs. She was absolutely awful before. Now she's pretty damn good. A two stage special, ignore the turns. She is just 8 CD after all. It reduces paralysis bind by two turns and change adjacent slots to matching. Pretty good for what is basically a 4 CD special. And then the level 2, which is 8 CD. Reduces paralysis bind by five turns, changes adjacent slots, including block to matching. And if Luffy is on the team or set a support, applies paralysis to all enemies for one turn, and you get a two times paralysis conditional for one turn yeah that's absolutely insane like paralysis is a very new mechanic and paralysis conditionals are even rarer so getting one for free is absolutely insane and she also does very very good utility so yeah this mommy <laughs> got an amazing buff can see let it use in all kinds of situations now that's very welcome for sure. Usopp, one of the worst ones before. He's also pretty good now. Now Usopp delays all enemies by two turns. Reduces special bind by five turns. Locks crew slots for two turns. And if Luffy is on the team or set a support for Usopp, you get a shame boost plus 0.9 for three turns. Like, this is not bad at all, but it's also not as impressive as, say, Nami. Like, the delay without any condition or such doesn't do that much. Special Bind at least removes 5 turns now, instead of, like, 2 or 3 like before. Locking Orbs can be pretty good, but it's also not like Usopp himself makes use of the locking the Orbs. And Chain Boost, pretty low, but for 3 turns, so... Can be a potentially good glue unit like, oh, I really need to remove special bind, I need to lock the orbs, I don't mind getting some extra shame boost, then Usopp can be pretty decent. Sanji, uh, pretty weak before, he has double special, but 
didn't really utilize it that well. So let's see if he can do that now. Change the addition slots, including block slots, the character's own type. So if you run him with Nami, you can get all orbs matching potentially. Instead of a chain lock like before, Sanji now has a chain boundary starting at 2.5. So this basically means that he has a double special chain boundary, so you can get chain boundary for different stages. And obviously, chain boundary is just a superior chain lock most of the time. So pretty great for a free to play unit. And if Luffy is on the team or set a support to Sanji, you reduce the duration of enemy barriers and damage notification by one turn. So yeah. Always nice to get more options, especially for damage nullification, which has very few removers. So yeah, solid buff, for sure. I've tried to use him a bit in the PKA, but gone for other options, but definitely can see him being used. One thing I've not mentioned yet, which is kind of important, is that all of these end up being boosted in most events, so them being actually good makes tier building a lot easier as well. Chopper was by far one of the worst units released for a long time. Like just look at this kit. Like this doesn't look like a unit released in like, what was it? 2021, 2022, don't remember exactly, but yeah, not very good. But he's at least usable now. Level one special, still pretty decent. Half damage taken, does some heal. Also does end of turn heal. And with Luffy, you can also apply some Psy resistance to enemies for two turns. And level two does a lot more. 60% damage reduction for three turns. He is crewed by 10 times uh, Chopper's recovery. And this can also overheal. Uh, he is crewed by 4000 HP at end of turn for three turns. It removes all poison. It reduces burn and decrease shame multiply growth rate by five turns. And if Luffy is in the crew, set as support for Chopper. You also apply a minus 20% side resistance to all enemies for two turns. So yeah, that extra resistance is very low. Like minus 20 side resistance is not a lot of extra damage. But as for the utility, like healing, damage reduction, and then Chopper removes three of the more niche status conditions in poison burn and decrease shame but then being niche also means that there's not super many removers of them so might see play eventually but he's still not like the most <laughs> impressive of this batch uh, robin was easily the best uh, of these before i've used her a lot since always boosted and she has support that can help her with especially attack down but of course now she's even better than before. Now she removes the spear and attack down by five turns. She just block and then adjacent to character's own type. And if Luffy is on the crew or set as support, you get you reduce defense by 80% for three turns and boost damage dealt to death down enemies by 1.75 times for three turns. And yeah, reducing defense for Three turns doesn't matter like if you kill a stage, it's not like you keep the death down. So this is just, if you stay on a stage for three turns, you have the death down for three turns. So if you want to take advantage of the death down conditional for different stages, you will need another special for the final stage to get that uh, death down applied to the enemy. I said this before, but reducing death by 80%. Is often not enough, so mainly look at this as an extra conditional. And in the end, it's just a bonus. The big thing here is that she removes more despair and attack down, which is very nice. Helps a lot with various events such as treasure map, where she is always boosted. As for Frankie, now. He reduces death up and damage reduction by 5 turns. It's not quite the same debuffs as Zoro, even if there's overlap in death up. And if Luffy is in the crew or set a support for Frankie, you get a 2.25 times Psy color affinity for 3 turns. And if Luffy is not on the team or set as support to Frankie, you get a 1.75 times color affinity like before. 
Not sure why they did it like this. In my opinion, the color finish should be part of the main special. And as a bonus for having Luffy, maybe you remove damage threshold as well, for example. That would have been really cool. But still, I've used Frankie occasionally, so him being even better does help. Like, remove five turns off the debuffs is a game changer for all of these. Uh, the maybe biggest buff of them all, together with Dami, is Brook. He did have double special before, and often, like for trash map and such, having a wave clear special with double special is invaluable. Not many units have that. And like before, Brook only did 5000 damage, so you couldn't really use him against trash map for wave clearing, but now it's 50,000 damage, which basically means we have a new wave clearer for treasure map in Brook, and that's just amazing. We also have the fact that Brook removes damage threshold and resilience by five turns. Uh, as you know, he has double special, that means you can remove those debuffs by 10 turns, which not many units do, like especially resilience. And if Luffy is in the crew or set a support for Brook, you also get an increased damage taken by 1.5 times for one turn. Doesn't go through full, full immunity or anything, but it's a free to play unit like what you expect. But yeah, I was very happy by this. We'll definitely end up using him quite a lot going forward thanks to that. And yeah, I was very happy to see this happening. I've not ended up trying any of this yet really, but that will definitely come. And I just hope now that they continue with this. I want more buffed free to play and rare recruits that will be super cool. But yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.